Uh, I'm Gunnar Heusberg. Uh, I am an MD, which I got in Germany many years ago. And after I got my MD in Germany, I decided to emigrate. And I emigrated to Canada. And I ended up in Montreal and got a PhD degree under Hans Selye, who in those days was a world famous researcher with a laboratory at the University of Montreal. After I had got my PhD, I decided to stay for a while and uh, I got a license to practice in Canada. But then I got an offer from UCLA and I decided to emigrate because they would give me more research facility than I had in Montreal. So I left, went to to UCLA, did brain research there, started publishing, and did that for a number of years until I decided to go into private practice, as a private practice in uh, the Los Angeles area for many years, and then retired because I got older, and I'm now a retired, semi-retired semi physician. Uh, who still lives in, and works in California. And you've become the EMF doctor. Yes, uh, quite a number of years ago, I uh, started getting interested in patients who developed chemical sensitivity, meaning getting sick from small amounts of chemicals. And I did some research, published on these cases, and then, interestingly enough, after a while, I suddenly saw the same patients again, and they said, Dr. Häuser, I'm now sensitive to electromagnetic fields. So I developed an interest in EMF and uh, decided to publish a little bit on that too. At the conference here, I will present mostly brain scans because I had a chance to do to have brain scans done on some patients of mine. And these are not just MRIs or CAT scans, these are functional brain scans, meaning they look at function of the brain. And one scan is called SPECT, S-P-E-C-T, another one is called PET, P-E-T. And the last publication of mine is on functional MRI where the advantage is that you do not inject any radioactive substance as you have the spectrum PET. And I found these patients to have abnormal brain scans. Uh, the ones with the functional MRI study uh, were patients who had become electrohypersensitive. So and they all had the same abnormalities. So one should now, if I had the money, one would add functional MRI brain scans uh, and do them in the patient who claims to be electrohypersensitive or has a confirmed the diagnosis even in the legal system. What does functional MRI mean exactly? Functional MRI, what, what do you do? Oh, uh, I'm not a radiologist, but uh, it is still an MRI, but they dial the whole system differently and there's no injection, there's no, no chemical used at all. But somehow other we can decide uh, exactly what the abnormalities are. What is hard to understand, but also fascinating, is the fact that uh, some of the functional MRI will give you an idea about connections between different brain areas. And as a matter of fact, a few million dollars are now available to study that coming out of the uh, Middle uh, West somewhere, like uh, I believe in uh, Minnesota. And they have created a term which is called connectome, which is a study of connections in the brain. And these are studies you cannot do with SPECT and PET and regular MRI. So this is a very special way to go. They are just a little bit harder to understand, but the patients love it because they don't get an injection. And I love it because it gives them a chance to learn.
I know you're working with other scientists, uh, other researchers uh, on, the, on this brain yes, aspect yes, of EMF. Yes, to extent it's now a little bit difficult because I'm uh, more limited. I'm 92 years old, so I can't communicate, or com I should say, communicate as easily. But yes, I still am connected with scientists, and one connection, of course, is having come to this conference which is, as I understand, the first EMF conference of the United States. And it's a fascinating conference. I love to attend it. I have learned a lot. And some of the big names in the field are actually here and have presented their data and opinions. Mm -hmm. So do you think that medical faculties are evolving or opening up to the science of EMF effects? very slowly because you have the industry against you. But if you show that electromagnetic fields are damaging, you have the industry against you immediately. And uh, the other thing is politics, uh, which is that you would have to persuade government agencies and government officials to help you, and that's very hard to do. Another thing is that doctors have very little time these days because they are loaded down with red tape. So as a physician, you have less and less time to do what you really want to do, which is to practice medicine. Mm -hmm. That's a little discouraging for patients. It is because uh, I am getting calls uh, from patients who saw me 10, 20 years ago and they say, Dr. Heuser, will you see us again? Because uh, trying to see a regular, uh, I should say, regular modern doctor uh, is difficult, number one. And two, they only spend so little time with you. There never is time to really open up and tell the doctor what, you, what your problems are because they only have a short time. Lisa Nash says many of those doctors who are arrogant don't realize they are chemically and electrically sensitive themselves. That may be, yes. But I haven't studied that aspect. No. I just know that it's hard, harder and harder for patients to not only find a doctor, but also to have a doctor who, who has an interest and spends the time with them. Yeah, she told me that because doctors are not making more and more, and more money these days, I think they're making less and less, unless they're plastic surgeons. I find that's the common thread with most doctors here at this conference is that they became ill themselves. Uh, let's get back to how, what was your interest when you were a student and a young doctor to be interested in forensic medicine and toxicology? Oh, that was uh, interesting because uh, way back when uh, I was running a headache clinic in the Los Angeles area and they, at the time there were only two headache clinics, one of those was mine. And uh, I was introduced to this couple who were in their 80s and had bought a mobile home. They moved into the mobile home and both got sick with severe headache and uh, disorientation and stumbling and problems with their balance. And then what happened is that they were told when they went to the doctors, oh, you're just getting old because now you're in your age. Uh, anyway, I was called in because I was running this headache clinic and they had both developed severe headaches. Turned out that the reason for the headaches was that the mobile home had a lot of formaldehyde in it. And at the time, we measured the formaldehyde, found it to be high. Uh, I told the patients what we found. Uh, we were able to get them refunded. In other words, they were able to give up their mobile home and got the money back, got better. And then I said to myself, my, that's an interesting subject. You know, the uh, toxicology of formaldehyde and other substances. So I became an expert. With Bill Ray? Pardon? You work with Bill Ray? No, I didn't. I just oh. met him. Okay. And I think he was a very kind and gentle person. And uh, he was at the time already cautiously ill. You looked at his skin, it was kind of yellowish. And he was not well, but he was kind, interested, 
and very nice and easy to meet. Bill was himself a testimony to the fact that you can live a good and long life even if you have chronic disease or infectious uh, disease. That is probably two years. He had polio, right? Pardon? He had polio when he was young yes, also. Yes, that is true. Yeah, he had many reasons to be disabled, but nevertheless was, you know, building the most successful and recognized clinic in the United States which specialized in environmental illness. Maybe the world's best clinic? That may well be, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you very much for sharing. This is a very precious moment for me. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome anytime. Great kind. And thanks for your interest and caring. That's what we need too, you know. We need people who care and people who are close to the public arena so that the news can be spread.